Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. This video is a continuation of previous sets of video where we are discussing about constraint and related component. In the previous four videos, we have seen about what is constraint and the types of constraint and not null constraint, unique constraint and primary key constraint and its related concept. As a continuation of that, in this video, we are going to learn about what is foreign key constraint and its related concepts. To start with, let's understand what are the types of constraints and then we'll get into the foreign key constraint. So here is the list of constraints available in Oracle that is not null constraint, unique key constraint, primary key constraint, foreign key constraint, check constraints and ref constraints. Out of this, not null, unique key and primary key have already covered in the previous set of videos. And in this video, we'll learn about foreign key constraint. And in the upcoming videos, we'll learn about the check and the reference constraint. Okay, to start with, let us understand what is a foreign key constraint. So here is the snippet from Oracle documentation. As you can see here, a foreign key constraint, also called as a referential integrity constraint, designates a column as the foreign key and establishes the relationship between the foreign key and a specified primary key or a unique key that is called a re referenced key. So only in the foreign key constraint, we actually have two set of table. The one table in which we are actually defining the foreign key that is called the child table that refers to another table's column and that table is called the parent table. So using foreign key, whenever we want to insert a record into a child table, we can enforce whether it has a referenced data in the parent table. Okay, let us understand using few examples. Here are a few real time examples where the foreign key constraints are really useful. For example, a customer and order table. So before creating the order, obviously we should have the customer entry in the customer table. So whenever I'm inserting into the order table, I can make sure that I have a valid customer already created and present in the customer table. That means we'll be creating the foreign key on the order customer ID of the order table that refers to the customer ID of the customer table. Let us understand with one more example, the employees and department. That means whenever I'm going to insert a record into the employee table, I can make sure that he has a valid department already created. So in that time, we'll be defining a foreign key constraint on the department ID of employee table, which refers to the department ID of department table. Let us look into one more example, a product and categories. That means before inserting into a product, I should have a valid category defined in the categories so that I can make sure that all the products are inserted with a valid category. So in this case, we'll be defining the foreign key on the category ID of the product table, which actually refers to the category ID from the category table. Let us look into one more example, an invoice and invoice items. So before the invoice items are getting inserted into the child table, we can make sure that the header information about the invoice itself is inserted into the invoice table. So we can define foreign key on the invoice ID column, which actually refers to the invoice ID in the invoice table. So finally, let us look into one more example, a course registration. So here we have a course table which contains all the information about the course and we have a student table which have the information about the students. Now we are going to create a registration that means a student is going to register with the course. So in this case in the registration table we have a three column registration ID, course ID and student ID. So before inserting into this registration table I can make sure that the course ID what I'm going to insert into this registration table and the student ID what I'm going to insert into the registration table are valid. That is why we are creating two foreign key constraints. One, one referring the course ID of the course table another foreign key by referring the student ID of the student table. So in this case, we are actually creating two foreign keys. So this is an example like in a same table, we can create more than one foreign key constraint. Now let us see how to create a foreign key constraint. For demo purpose, I'm going to create two table T underscore department, which is going to have the department information and T underscore EMP table where we are going to insert the employee related information. And we are going to create a foreign key constraint on the department number of employee table by referring the department number of the department table. Let's start with the demo. So first I'm going to create the department table making the department number as the primary key column and now I'm going to create the employee table. So now if you see here we are specifying the keyword reference. By specifying the reference keyword we can create the foreign key constraint on the department number column of employee table by referring the parent table and the parent tables column name. So here I'm referring the department tables department number column. So let me create the 
employee table so the employee table is created so first i'm going to populate four departments into the department table let me commit the data now let us populate few employee information so the employee information is also committed now let's just query from t underscore employee table as expected all the information are there suppose if i am trying to insert another employee let's say i am trying to insert siva with a department number of 60 which is actually not present in the department table so in this case we'll get an error called uh, integrity constraint violated so this is how the foreign key constraint will enforce the rule so only if the value or only if the value what we are trying to insert on the department number column exists in the parent table then only this insert will be allowed suppose if i am just trying to insert the 60 into the parent table let's say i am i am inserting teaching right i have inserted one row into the department table let me commit now i am trying to insert the uh, values into employee table now if you see the informations are inserted properly right this is the first method now let's see one more method of creating this so in this way i just mentioned the keyword references here let's see the second method so let me drop the employee table and department table now i am creating the department table now if you see here i am additionally specifying the keyword constraint followed by the constraint name foreign key of department number that means this department number column refers to the department number in employee table references parent table and parent tables column name see the advantage of specifying the constraint keyword is we can give a user defined constraint name in our earlier case i just specified only the reference keyword only however the constraint got created but the thing here is the constraint will get created with the system defined constraint name but in the second method we'll be able to give a name for this constraint so let me just create this table then i will show you the constraint name if you just query from the user constraint table you will be able to see the constraint name here fk underscore department number that is what we have mentioned it here this is the second method let me show you one more method of creating the constraint so let me drop the employee table i'm dropping the department table i'm creating the department table that is a parent table we are creating i've just created the child table employee without any constraint specified here in our first two cases we are directly creating the constraint as part of the table definition itself this is the, this is our first method and in the second method also we are directly giving the definition of the constraint as part of the create table statement itself however in the third method i just created both the table and then i'm altering the employee table to add the constraint here so this is the third method we can actually modify this employee table to add the foreign key constraint related information let me show you the fourth method also so let me first drop the employee table drop the department table so i'm creating the department table here i'm creating the employee table here both the tables are created so here also i am altering the employee table and then i am adding the constraint information the only difference between the third and fourth method is in third method i didn't specify any constraint keyword followed by the name of the constraint however in the fourth method i am i am giving a keyword constraint followed by a name for the constraint the advantage is we can give a user defined name for this constraint right now let's quickly run through our example our first method is we are directly giving the reference keyword as part of the create table statement itself in our second method i am just giving the constraint keyword followed by a name for this constraint the first method and the second method are exactly the same the only difference is in the second method up additionally we are giving a name for the constraint which is missing in the first method the advantage is we can give a user defined name for our constraint okay now let's see the third method the third method i'm creating the table first followed by followed by the alter statement to give to create the constraint so in this third method also we are not giving any user defined constraint name so oracle will automatically create a system defined constraint name now let me show you the fourth method so here is the fourth method the fourth method is exactly similar to the second method where we are giving a name for the constraint but technically it is very similar to our third method because here also i'm creating the table both the table and then i am using the alter statement i'm just creating the constraint the only difference is in the third method we are not giving any constraint name in the fourth method we are giving the constraint name right 
Now that we have created the constraint, now let us check once the constraint is created, where to go and check the metadata related information. So now, now let me just uh, drop and recreate the informations again. So now let me drop this. I'm creating the table. Okay, let me first uh, show you in the first method. Okay, let me drop both the table. Tables are dropped. Now let me create the department table. Let me create the employee table. As I mentioned, we are not using any constraint keyword here. So we are not giving any name. Once the constraint and the tables are in created, we can go and check the metadata related information under the user constraint, where you can see the under which owner the constraint exists, the name for the constraint. As I told you, here we are not using any constraint keyword. So the system has automatically given one name like sys underscore C followed by one sequence number. And P refers to the primary key constraint that is for the employee uh, number column. You and then R refers to the referential constraint. And both these constraints are defined on the T underscore EMP tables. Now let me show you the second method also so that we can see the constraint name here that is user defined constraint name. I have created the department table. I have created the employee table. Now let me query the table. Now if you can see here in our first method there was a system def defined constraint name. However in the second method there is a user defined constraint name like fk underscore department number. That is what we have mentioned in the line number 12 here. As I mentioned here in the first method we are not giving any user defined name. However, in the second method, that's why uh, you are seeing here the system defined name. However, in the second method, we are actually giving the uh, user defined constraint name like fk underscore department. That's what we are actually seeing here. So the metadata table name is user underscore constraint. Okay. Now that we have, we know how to create the foreign key constraint and we have seen the information in the metadata table. Now let us check how to enable and disable the constraint. Okay, let me drop and recreate the tables again. Both the tables are dropped. I'm creating the department table. I've just created the employee table. Okay, using the alter statement, if we want, we can disable or enable. The statement is simple and straightforward. You say alter table followed by the table name. Either you say disable or enable, that is like disable constraint, constraint name. We need to give the constraint name. So that is why I always prefer to use the syntax along with the constraint keyword so that we can give a user defined constraint name and the same name you can use it as part of the altered statement either to enable or disable. If you are not giving a name here then we need to copy the system defined constraint name from the uh, metadata table and that name you need to use it here. So by executing this this will actually go and disable the constraint. If you want to enable just say enable constraint constraint name. Finally if you don't want this constraint to drop the constraint you can say alter table table name drop constraint and constraint name okay so here are the syntax for quick reference after creating the table you can simply say alter table table name disable or enable constraint followed by the name of the constraint and finally to drop the constraint what you can do is you can simply say alter table table name drop constraint constraint name if you learned something new please like this video if you want any specific questions to be answered please post your questions in the comments or you can drop to this mail id but before that you can check whether a similar question has already been answered as part of the subscriber question series or as part of the interview question series if you are not able to find your question here please write back to me i'll be happy to record and post as a new video and thanks a lot for watching if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new future video interview question sql practical question and concept videos and thanks a lot for watching this video